And God's law should not be the main motivation. If not, people will be under pressure. And God's grace should be the main motivation. Okay, now we'll go back to that question. Number two, after the woman with the 12 years of bleeding touched Jesus and was healed, Jesus said to her, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. What Jesus' nature do these words of Jesus reveal? How is his love and acceptance of people? So this shows Jesus' nature of acceptance, of care, of uh, that he wants to have a family relationship with us, that he treasures us. He wants us, he, he want us to be his children. So uh, what is his love and acceptance of people? So his love is that he accepts everyone who comes to him, he, he, who trusts in him, and he, he accepts us even when we have sinned. He accepts us we, even when we are weak. He's willing to bless us. And then number three, Psalm 139, you're all around me, in front and in back, and you lay your hand upon me. What is God doing when he stays around us and lays his hand upon us? In the Bible, laying his hand upon us means to bless us. So God lay his hand upon us, he, to, he comes to bless us. And he's with us to do different things. He, he uh, guides us, he reminds us, he motivates us, he comforts us, he uh, gives us strength, he uh, gives us joy. So he does all these good things to us all the time. And especially when we trust in him, we I will pray to Him, we will experience His work more and more. So we can motivate people to, to have a close relationship with God by telling them that when you trust in God, when you pray to Him, He is very happy to bless you. Isaiah 49, 15, Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. When God does not forget us, what is He doing? He's thinking ab about us dearly, in a uh, compassionate way, in a loving way. He's thinking about us. And what does this verse show us about God's nature? His nature is He doesn't forget, He, he remembers very well, and He remembers with love, and He cares about people. Now why do I go through this question? Because some people just hear it once, they might not remember. Because these teachings are not just teaching for one time. I hope this become your teaching for your whole lifetime, that whenever you speak, you always talk about the goodness of God. God is so wonderful. God is full of blessings and God is full of love. And God is happy with us whenever we come to Him. That you always talk like that. And then people will be motivated to come to God. And we ourselves will be filled with joy and peace because we know that God is happy with us. God is blessing us. And when we repent, God for sure will forgive us. So all day long, we are living in peace and freedom. So I hope these teachings become your teaching. So that's why I go through these questions again so that you remember it better. Okay, number 5, 7, 9, 3, 17. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with singing. What does this verse tell us, show us about God's nature? Does God have feeling? What are God's feeling toward us? Now, God's nature here is He's a joyful God. He's a God of appreciation. He appreciates people. He likes people. He wants to be with people. And He has strong, positive emotions. His feelings are all positive. Does God have feelings? Yes, He does. And what are God's feeling toward us? He's happy. He's full of love. He's rejoicing over us. He accepts us. Romans 8.32 He who does not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, will, how will he not also um, along with him graciously give us all things? So what God's nature does this verse show? What does this verse promise to us? So is this verse tell us that God gives us his son and also will give us all things together with, with Jesus. So his nature is his generosity. He's generous. He's happy to give us many blessings. He gave us the greatest blessing and He wants to give us more. So He gives us all things. So whenever we 
follow him and obey him, then he will experience more and more blessings that we can bless more people. And I thank God that God has blessed me and I'm willing to bless more people. I want to do more things for people to bring blessings to God, uh, to people. So I, I thank God that he continue to give me good things when, we are, when I continue to follow him. So I hope we all would love God and follow God and glorify God, give God all the glory and then God is happy with us and he will bless us. So what does this verse promise to us? The Bible verse promised that, that he will give Jesus to us and also all things together so we can claim all things when we have a good relationship with God, when we trust in God. When we don't have sins blocking, when we repent of our sins and trust in Jesus and obey Him. What are the differences between motivation by God's grace and God's law? When people are motivated by God's grace, He is, he is confident of God's love, confident of God's joy, God's acceptance, and then He is very happy to obey God. He is very happy to, to pray to Him. He will, he will enjoy His prayer. Oh Lord, you're so wonderful. I like to pray. I like to come to you. I enjoy praying to you. So that motivate him to pray to him and obey him and serve him. And when people are motivated by the Lord, then he's reminded, I have to do the I have to do evangelism. I have to tell people, I have to obey God, I have to pray, I have to do this. Always saying, I have to, I have to. Then it's always the law. Then then he's under pressure. Now it's like if a husband says to a wife, Oh, I have to spend time with you. I have so much to do and I, I have to spend time with you. And then that becomes a law. Instead, the husband says, You're so wonderful. I'm happy to be with you and I enjoy the time with you. When I talk with you, I enjoy it. Then he's enjoying, he's motivated by grace to love his wife. So when we pray, I hope that we are motivated by God's grace and say, God is so loving. When I pray to Him, He's always blessing me. So I'm happy to pray to Him because He's always blessing us when I pray to Him. Okay, and then what are the results if people are motivated by the law? They will have a lot of pressure and guilt feeling. They will compete with each other. They will compare with other people. They will accuse other people and say, you didn't obey enough. Uh, you didn't uh, listen to God enough. I'm sure we have all come across people like that. And actually, most people uh, mostly, they know that they are saved by grace through faith. They, they know the salvation by grace. But after that, uh, a lot of times it's a lot of uh, good works. Always have to say, you have to do this, you have to do that. Now, I want to do that too. I want to. Instead, I have to. I want to do it because it pleases God. I'm happy to please Him because He is so wonderful. Can you describe God's grace to us? God's grace. Now, these are questions for you that you can do. Uh, when you do the assignment, you don't have to answer all the questions, but choose the most important ones to show that you understand uh, what I teach. Or you can write messages to me, including these ideas, and I will let you know how you're doing. Can you describe God's grace to us? God's grace is His unconditional love and blessing to us. That He's, he, he is happy to accept us, to forgive us, to, uh, to be with us, to, to guide us, to bless us, and give us strength, and, so, uh, and give us eternal life, and give us reward. All these are God's grace. It's, we don't deserve that, and we didn't earn it. It's by free gift. Is it hard to please God? Why? It's not hard to please God, because whenever we repent, the whole heaven will rejoice. God is very, very happy. Whenever we pray to Him, He will come to us, and actually He comes to us first. Whenever we love Him, He will prepare for us things we never imagined. So He's always responding whenever we do anything to, to obey Him. When we give a cup of cold water, He will remember and He will reward it, reward us. So it's not hard to please God, but we're not perfect. So whenever we've done anything wrong, we say, God, please forgive me. Please forgive me. I'm, I'm sorry I've done it. I'm very sorry that it's sin. Please forgive me. And then we are confident that He forgives us. And then we are happy to do more things for God. What happens when we seek God's kingdom and love Him? When we seek God's kingdom, what does that mean? God's kingdom means that we want more people to enter the kingdom of God. We want more people saved. We tell people about Jesus. We pray for people to be saved. And also we let God be the king in our heart. That is, then our heart becomes the kingdom. We, got, 
let God be the king in our family and let God be the king in, our, in the church in the place of work everywhere I go I let God be the king then we that is seeking his kingdom and love him when we love him then he will give us all things he'll give us things we never imagined and all these things will be given to us okay number 12 when ministers are motivated by the law how will the law affect his ministry what are the characteristics of people under his ministry when people are motivated by the law uh, how will the law affect his ministry he will be under pressure he will be saying I didn't do well enough the church is not growing uh, the people are not obeying so the law will give him more pressure and then the characteristic under his ministry the people uh, they're under pressure so they they're not happy and they come to church and are happy they're not they're not rejoicing they're not relaxed in God they are under pressure and they have a habit of accusing people and comparing with people and then number 13 when people are motivated by God's grace does it mean that they are lazy and sin easily no when we have a healthy balance of grace and the law now there is a um, a wrong teaching called grace gospel uh, what it means is they just talk about the grace of God and no law doesn't talk about what you should do what you how you will obey God just how about God's grace so that's wrong we have the grace of God but at the same time we're motivated by the grace of God to obey to love God to pray to uh, obey God in every way of our life and also to serve God to tell people about Jesus and help people to grow spiritually so we have the grace of God to motivate us and, uh, and to motivate us to obey the law of God so we're not uh, when we understand God is so full of blessing now someone asked this before what if I teach the uh, grace of God and then people are lazy then we tell them the law we tell them when you sin there is a consequence and you suffer the consequence but when you obey God and you love God God is very happy and he will bless you why not do that why don't you serve God and then God is very happy with you so we can motivate people by the grace of God at the same time we can remind people of the consequences of sin when people are motivated by God's law does it mean that they will serve diligently and joyfully no actually people they're under the pressure of God they say oh there's so much to do why do I have to do it and they they say oh I, I want Jesus to come back and then I don't have to serve anymore some people are serving they're too tired in the ministry so when we are motivated by the grace of God we're motivated to serve uh, with energy and with joy and when people are motivated by God's law a lot of times they don't have much joy they have a lot of pressure Romans 8 15 says that receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out Abba Father what are the differences between the spirit of adoption and the spirit of bondage the spirit of adoption is that we are children of God we are we are adopted to be his children thank you Lord I enjoy you I can come to you with confidence but the spirit of bondage is saying oh God saves me now I owe him a lot I have to do this I have to do that if not I'm a lazy servant then it's always under pressure it's the same thing when someone is married and then he says oh I have to wash dishes I have to work I have to support the lives of everyone in the family so much work so much work then then he is suffering instead of saying thank God I'm a family that I can enjoy them together I can I can uh, bless them help them and they, I see that they're growing and I'm very happy so uh, in the family if a person is motivated by God's grace to love the family then the family will be full of love and he will enjoy doing it number 16 second Corinthians 5 14 says that the love of God compels us motivate us what does that mean that means that his love is so wonderful I'm willing to serve God I'm willing to die for Jesus I'm willing to do anything to please him please describe what prayer of grace 
prayer worship and interactive prayer, how can these kinds of prayer help us? So this kind of prayer are first prayer of grace is is declaring declaring God's grace and blessings to us. Oh God is loving us, God is blessing us, God is with us. God wants uh, to change our life. God wants to give us strength. God wants to give us spiritual gifts. So this is a prayer of grace. Thank you, Lord. You are blessing me right now. And then prayer of worship is from us to God. God, I want to worship you. I adore you. I love you. I like you. I enjoy you. Interactive prayer is, I believe, that is a combination of the above two. When I love God, I know that God is very happy. When I come to Him, He's very excited. When I pray to Him, He'll listen to me and He'll bless me. So this kind of prayer uh, help us to be confident of God, that He is responding to our prayer. So I hope we are all confident. Now we don't know how God answers a prayer. It doesn't matter. For me, I know that His answer is the best. Even though I don't get what I want now, it doesn't matter. Because God will give that to me in the right time. God will give me the best in the right time. So I have full confidence. when. Things don't happen the way I ask. I say, it doesn't matter. It will come eventually. And it will come slowly. doesn't matter. And uh, I just trust in God. Hallelujah. 18. What are some words of grace, words of encouragement and blessing that we can say to people? So we can say it to people too. We can say, oh, I thank you. I appreciate you. You are so wonderful. I like you. You are working hard. You are a wonderful person. So these are words of grace. What are some ways we can guide and encourage people to change with God's grace? We can say, well, God loves us so much. When we pray, He is very happy to bless us. Shall we pray more? Because He is happy to bless us. And uh, the Bible is full of God's Word. It's so wonderful, full of promises. When we read the Bible, it's, it will give us confidence in God. Shall we, shall we pray more? Shall we read the Bible more? Uh, and or are you... Uh, do you want the family to be better? Do you like to have better communication? And then we can enjoy each other more. Okay, so we finish here. So is there any question? You can have any question, please send uh, to the uh, West Africa group. Uh, if not, we'll have a prayer right now. We'll have a prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you have questions, you can type it now, and then after the prayer, I will answer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. You're full of grace and mercy. You're, you're full of kindness. You have all kinds of goodness that you want to give us. You have all kinds of good things that you want to give us. You are a generous God. You are a good God. Lord, help us to trust in you, to enjoy you, to be motivated by you, that we have strength from God. We have the motivation from God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are so wonderful. You are full of grace. You are full of mercy. Lord, you are wonderful. We want to trust in you. And we know that when we trust in you and obey you and love you, you will give us blessings from time to time. And you bless us, bless our whole life. Our whole life will go higher and higher in your kingdom. Lord, give us confidence in you, that we trust in you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you don't have any question, I will illustrate this in our sermons. Okay, I just, just have a few minutes and then we'll stop. Uh, so, how does this help us in our ministry, in our uh First in our life, first if every day when we wake up we say, God is loving me, I'm rejoicing in the Lord, I can always be joyful, I can enjoy God, then a whole person will be full of joy, full of love. And we know that God treasures us and treasures every person, even though no matter how weak the person might be, God still treasures the person. So when we come to church, we see the people, we smile at them, we are happy to, be, to see them, and then we encourage them by giving them hope. Now, encouragement, sometimes people misunderstand. They think encouragement is like this. They say, pray more, read the Bible more, obey God, do more evangelism. Now, these are reminders. Please distinguish this. These are reminders. You tell people what to do. This is not encouragement. It's like a 
parents said to a child, read, study more, do more work. That is not encouragement. That is telling them what to do. So we don't tell people all the, what to do all the time. But instead we can tell them how God loves us. So that's the grace. How God loves us and accepts us. God is very happy to see you. I'm happy to see you. And God wants to bless you today. And you see blessings of God. And then, so when we see people, that's what we say. And then when we preach, we can tell people, God is full of mercy and kindness and goodness. No matter how weak we are, God is very happy to bless us and give us strength. And the more we trust in Him, the more we'll be healed. The more we forget about the world and don't look at the world and look at the blessings of God and remember how God has blessed us, then we'll have more strength. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're blessing me now. You have blessed me many times before. I know that you continue to bless me. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we can always tell people how God is loving and gracious. He is happy to bless us. And then whenever we obey Him and trust him, in Him, He will bless us more. Whenever we repent, the whole heaven will rejoice. Now, this is the law combined with the grace of God. The law is when you repent. So that's the law. The law is what we do. It's uh, the law. Grace is what God does for us. So whenever we repent, that's what we do. That's the law. And then God, the whole heaven will rejoice. That is the grace of God. Whenever we pray to Him, we pray, that is the law. Whenever we pray to Him, God for sure hears us. And before we pray, He already knows our needs. And He will prepare for us blessings to bless us. And then, uh, when we read the Bible, uh, that's the law. We obey, read the Bible and obey the Bible. And God has many promises there. And He wants to bless us with these promises and He will give us all these blessings. So, when we read the Bible, it will change our life. It will change our life. It will give us wisdom. It will give us confidence that God is hearing my prayer. God is blessing me. You, know, you notice, I have all this confidence in God because of the promises of God. It's not because of me. It's the confidence in the Word of God because God has promised that. When we trust in Him, for sure He will bless us. When we love Him, for sure He will prepare for us things we never imagined. And when we seek His kingdom, He for sure He will give us all these things. So the, the Bible has promised us that. Therefore, we can read the Bible and obey the Bible. And then when we uh, care about each other, God is very happy because the Bible says when we give a cup of cold water to a little one, then we won't lose the reward. Then if we help someone spiritually, pray for someone, that pleases God more. That pleases God more. And God is very happy. So whenever we help someone, pray for someone, God is very happy. And when we bring someone to Jesus, uh, God is very happy. Now if the person is not willing to believe in Jesus, then we say, okay, it's okay, no problem. But I let you know God loves you and I hope sometime you think about God and pray to God. We don't have to give people pressure. Now people serving under the law of God, they will have a lot of pressure. They want to bring more people to church. Now we want to bring more people to church. Too, but they use the law. They will say, you have to come to church. If not, you can go to hell and uh, God will punish you. And, and, and they give pressure to people. Instead, we will say, I experience this blessing all the time. And when you come to God, you can experience this blessing more. And He's full of blessings. He will comfort you. He will give you strength. So we motivate people to believe in Jesus, Jesus by God's grace, not by God's law, but by God's grace. Now, at some point, we might have to warn people of the warning of the law. Sometimes we have to warn people, you know, not believing in Jesus, we have, we have to face God uh, who judges us. And we have to go to hell if we don't have the forgiveness of Jesus. But that's not our main message. Our main message is that God is full of blessings. God is full of good things. So when we trust in God and obey Him, He's very happy. And so when you come to Jesus, you'll see your life full of blessings and full of grace. So then we'll be always joyful. So if you find yourself not joyful, we examine ourselves. What is, what is motivating us? What is happening inside our heart? Are we motivated by the law? Are we saying, I have to do this, I have to do that? Or do we say, 
God is so full of blessings. So I hope everyone here will be filled with the grace of God, filled with the love of God. God is loving us. And some people will say, well, how can we see, where can we see God's grace? We can see God's grace in nature. We can see God's grace in salvation of Jesus, in the forgiveness, in the work of the Holy Spirit, in how He helped us. All this we can see God's grace. We can see God's love in many, many areas. So I hope that we all can see God's grace and we can enjoy God's grace. And then we are full of God's grace. And then whenever we talk, we are full of God's grace. Now this is my most important teaching. I hope that you remember this and then apply it. And I hope that after the lesson, you have time to practice this. Say to each other to talk about God's grace, how to tell each other about God's grace so that uh, each one is motivated by God's grace to enjoy God, to obey God, and follow God. And uh, that's very important so that we're not pushing people to change by God's law, by not giving people pressure to change, but telling them how wonderful God is, how wonderful it is to follow God and obey God. Okay, so that's the key point. The law motivation by the law is telling people you have to do this, you have to do that. But motivation by the grace of God is saying, God is so full of blessings. God has so many good things and we can experience Him. And when you trust in Him and obey Him, you'll be blessed by God in all ways. So, so please come to Him and you experience Him. It's His goodness is wonderful. And you can see His goodness in His nature, in the food, in you know, a wonderful body. Uh, all these things, we can see God's grace. So we want to live in God's grace. Okay, God bless you.